Breaking news. A terrifying warning from Pope Francis has shocked the world and caused fear in many Christians. Pope Francis opened an important meeting of Catholic bishops today on the future of the church. He seriously gave the message to all his disciples and also to all the people of the world that the Antichrist has truly appeared among us. A dark force is living among humans and it is hiding in the darkness waiting for an opportunity to appear before the public. There has been a lot of horrifying evidence about the existence of the Antichrist that Pope Francis has presented. Throughout Pope Francis' speech emphasized biblical evidence. He firmly affirmed that the Antichrist is not a problem we fear in the future, but that he has already walked among us, and remind them to maintain their faith without being influenced by evil forces that may cause them to stray away from their current correct faith. An important meeting was opened with the Catholic bishops to announce the appearance of the evil Antichrist among us without everyone realizing it. From there, discuss the future of the association to come up with strategies to defend and protect everyone against this evil enemy. After the meeting, all participating bishops agreed with his speech and decisions. Because every one of them knows that the appearance of Antichrist is not a hypothesis or conspiracy theory, but it is actually written in the Bible. Over the centuries, there have been many research reports analyzing each verse of the Bible, some of which have described the Antichrist as a powerful and famous political leader. On the contrary, many people believe that he will be a creature exuding darkness and evil in human form, thereby easily blending into human society. All of this came to us very suddenly, just through that speech. We were warned about a dark force that is aiming to harm all life on Earth. Indeed, this inevitably causes confusion and panic among many people, but they deserve to know what is really going on in this world. Let's dig deeper into this issue to better understand this worrying danger. Why Pope Francis suddenly revealed this? Pope Francis is the head of the Catholic Church and is respected all over the world. He sent this message to the world with his profound understanding and vast knowledge of the scriptures. While Pope Francis has spoken countless times about the importance of discernment and the Antichrist battle between good and evil, his teachings often emphasize issues such as social justice, environmental care, and mercy. He also linked the concept of ten kings in biblical prophecy with his revelation of the end times and the Antichrist. Ultimately, we should approach these warnings with caution. All of us need to raise our awareness of this terrifying danger. How will he appear? There has been a lot of discussion and speculation about this issue, including that he will be a super rich man with huge assets, a religious leader with many followers, a politician with a lot of power in his hands, or an apostate in the church. In all of the above theories, the Antichrist is a certain billionaire with great economic and political influence as mentioned in the Bible. He is a person with an extremely cunning mind, has the ability to connect people and can attract many people to follow him. He can manipulate public opinion and the minds of the masses, so identifying him is extremely difficult for most people. He will not reveal any loopholes, disguise himself as a successful person and have millions of admirers following him. With his terrible ability, he may be slowly manipulating and bewitching the whole world without us even knowing. What we need to realize is to always remember these predictions very carefully. In addition, the prophecies in the Bible clearly cannot be taken literally. They have many different interpretations and approaches. Of these, Antichrist refers to one of the most popular conjectures. With such extraordinary power, he could be anyone and impact the world in any way. So, be aware. Who is the Antichrist? We can read a lot of conspiracy theories in the world. They gave rise to a series of famous figures with great power and influence, such as Vladimir Putin, Prince William, and especially Barack Obama and Donald Trump are always top figures of concern. But what is terrifying is that one of the most prestigious people in the Catholic Church, Pope Francis, is the Antichrist. Surprise, right? Please leave your comment about this idea. How do we recognize him? The Bible does not say anything specific about where the Antichrist will come from. Numerous Bible scholars speculate about the origins of the Antichrist, suggesting possibilities ranging from a confederacy of ten nations to a revival of the Roman Empire. Some even propose that he must be of Jewish descent to claim messianic status. However, it remains speculative as the Bible does not explicitly detail the Antichrist's background or ethnicity. 
the day of his revelation will come. Remember that in Thessalonians 2, 3, 4. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Everyone will be surprised when he actually reveals his identity. In the past, there have been many conjectures that Adolf Hitler was the Antichrist, because he is exactly like the description of the Bible and his cruel deeds against the Jews and also the Bible. Throughout history, a series of evil people have been labeled Antichrists. But so far, all that thinking is wrong. To be able to most clearly determine who the Antichrist is, we should rely on the Bible. Revelation 13, 5, 8 declares, The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise his authority for 42 months. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. He gave the power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. And he was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the book of life belonging to the Lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. Numerous Bible scholars speculate about the origins of the Antichrist, suggesting possibilities ranging from a confederacy of ten nations to a revival of the Roman Empire. Some even propose that he must be of Jewish descent to claim messianic status. However, it remains speculative as the Bible does not explicitly detail the Antichrist's background or ethnicity. The day of his revelation will come. The Antichrist is going to be an imposing ruler. The allure of a compelling narrative often captivates the masses, winning hearts and minds in ways that performance alone cannot. Whether it's a tale of overcoming adversity or the quest for significance, people are drawn to stories of triumph. This phenomenon is not only evident in politics, but also in the broader scope of human experience. Just as individuals can rise from humble beginnings to global prominence, so too will the Antichrist emerge, initially unnoticed but ultimately captivating humanity. In Daniel's prophetic vision, symbolic representations of kings as horns shed light on the rise of the Antichrist. Described as distinct from his predecessors, he will ascend after a period of turmoil, forming alliances with ten kings before subduing three. Interpretations vary, with some associating these kings with future Roman emperors or figures within the Roman Catholic Church. However, it is plausible to view them as literal monarchs, as Daniel himself suggests. The Antichrist will leverage his charisma to sway the masses, leading them astray with his magnetic appeal. Characterized by intelligence, strength, and exceptional communication skills, the Antichrist will navigate the political landscape with finesse, emerging as a military tactician and strategic thinker. Yet beneath his charming facade lies a malevolent nature, revealed midway through the tribulation period. Intent on eradicating Christianity and persecuting Jews, he will defy God's law, seeking to alter prophecies and demand worship as a false deity. The Antichrist's allure lies in his multifaceted persona, a charismatic leader, intellectual prodigy, and religious manipulator. He will present solutions to humanity's most pressing issues, masquerading as a savior while serving as Satan's ultimate deception. With fervent devotion, the masses will rally behind him, embracing him as a messianic figure and willingly submitting to his rule. Is the Pope, or the next Pope, the Antichrist? Speculation regarding the identity of the Antichrist, the ominous figure prophecy to emerge in the end times, has sparked numerous theories, with the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church often becoming a focal point. During the era of the Protestant Reformation, Figures like Martin Luther and other reformers firmly believed that the Pope of their time fulfilled this role. Subsequent popes, including John Paul II and Benedict XVI, were also subjected to such conjecture, and it's likely that the current Pope Francis Awart will face similar accusations. But why is this the case? Does the Bible provide any indication that a Pope might indeed be the Antichrist? Speculation regarding the Pope potentially being the Antichrist often stems from interpretations of Revelation 17. 9. This verse describes an ominous end-time system symbolized by a woman riding a beast, requiring wisdom to discern its meaning. The mention of seven heads, representing seven hills where the woman sits, has led some to associate this with Rome, historically known as the City of Seven Hills. 
Consequently, the connection is drawn to the Roman Catholic Church, headquartered in Rome. Given the numerous biblical references to an Antichrist figure leading the opposition against Christ in the end times, it's not difficult to see why some might view the Pope as a plausible candidate if the center of this evil system is associated with Rome and led by an individual. Regardless of the identity of the Antichrist, it is crucial to heed the warnings of his arrival and discern those who embody his spirit. First, John 4. 2. 3 offers guidance on identifying this spirit. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not of God. While there may be disagreements with Pope Francis Warren on various aspects of Catholic doctrine, his acknowledgement of Jesus as divine and having come in the flesh aligns with biblical teachings. Thus, it seems unlikely that Pope Francis Warren fits the profile of the Antichrist. However, it's important to acknowledge that while a future pope could potentially fulfill this role, the Bible does not provide sufficient specifics to definitively identify any individual. Should a future pope or figure emerge as the Antichrist or his false prophet, their denial of Jesus' incarnation will serve as a clear indicator. Prior to Christ's second coming, the church will undergo a profound trial that will test the faith of many believers. This trial will involve a religious deception, enticing individuals with what appears to be a solution to their problems, but requires apostasy from the truth. At the heart of this deception lies the Antichrist, presenting a false messianic figure that exalts humanity above God and his true Messiah, who came in the flesh. The seeds of the Antichrist deception are already sown in the world whenever there is a claim to achieve messianic aspirations within history, contrary to the biblical understanding that such fulfillment lies beyond history in the eschatological judgment. Traditionally, the Church distinguishes between the Antichrist, a pseudo-messiah who will emerge at the end times to lead the world in opposition to the Church during the final trial, and Antichrist plural, who embody, in various ways, the same spirit of the Antichrist. These individuals exemplify the mindset of the devil and actively participate in perpetuating his agenda. The essence of the devil's spirit or mindset can be understood through Satan's temptation of Adam and Eve. In this encounter, the devil enticed them to grasp for God's promise of sharing in his image and likeness, but through their own efforts and on their terms, a classic example of self-will epitomized by Sinatra's famous, I did it my way. The spirit of the Antichrist mirrors this rebellion, opposing God's will and preferring one's own way. 2 Thessalonians 2 3 12 depicts the Antichrist as a figure imbued with the power and deceitfulness of the devil himself. He will cunningly deceive people into accepting falsehoods about his identity. Eventually, he will audaciously claim divinity, but his reign will be halted only by the return of the Lord. Christ will ultimately triumph over him, consigning him to eternal damnation. His is a powerful depiction of the Antichrist. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you this? And you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, and the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by his appearance and his coming. The coming of the lawless one by the activity of Satan will be with all power and with pretended signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception for those who are to perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore, God sends upon them a strong delusion to make them believe what is false so that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Thank you for watching our video until the end. Until we meet again, may the echoes of prophecy continue to stir our imagination, inspiring us to chart a course toward a future imbued with hope, resilience, and boundless possibility. If you enjoy this video, please give us a like and subscribe. Your support will be our motivation. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell to update the latest video from our channel Hope to see you in the next videos. Goodbye and God bless you.